beers. Beers, orange juice, coffee, bananas. So many drinks. Dexies, vape. <laughs> the essentials. A poster boy for uh, being able to operate despite a crippling addiction Truly. to all things. It's the truth. A hero, some would say. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pathetic banana. An inspiration? Ruined a surprise party this week, huh? Fuck yeah. You know what? <laughs> Fuck surprise parties, to be honest, because it's just a whole lot of nonsense about nothing. I like them, mate. Oh, of course you do. They're Please <laughs> tell me how you fucked one up then. They're, ex- they're, they're nice. It's a nice thing to do for someone. But in this one, it was uh, Ben from the studio. Oh, yeah. dear Ben. Happy birthday, young Snell. And uh, his girlfriend had set it up. And it was a Nobu. So no, we were, no, 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 we no. Balling out. Yeah. Got there on time. She's meant to be there in like 15 minutes. And my mate Josh is like, man, let's go out and have, a, have some nicotine. I was like, oh, I don't know, dude. It's getting pretty close to the time. He's like, dude, we still got 15 minutes. I was like, all right. So he goes to walk out. And I'm like, well, don't go out that way because that's probably where they're going to come in. It's like, we'll go out the other side. So we walk like two X's down. And then even then I'm like hiding behind a bollard, you know, having this vape. Ben and Bella just jumped straight out the taxi <laughs> right in front of me. And I was just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try and pass it off as like a, uh, dude, a was, backgammon addiction that you've never told anyone about? It was about? <laughs> horrible. Just watching what Josh, Josh backpedal. Like he's like, yeah. oh, yeah, like we're just here for some gambling. <laughs> It was still a surprise. So essentially what you're saying is your addiction ruined poor Ben's surprise birthday. Pretty much. And you gotta think Josh about- really was the instigator of the whole thing. It's Josh's fault. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah it sounds like that. However, you do need to look at the way your addictions are hurting those around you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, your addiction to vaping isn't bad as a story that I heard over the last week. And it seems like our dear President Biden isn't the only politician fucking shit up in America at the moment. <laughs> have you heard of this? Uh, I can't remember her name. Something Bobbit. Have you heard about her? You should get fingered in a <laughs> theatre. <laughs> Close. <laughs> they I, like, I only watched a second of the video, but I was like, there's no one going to talk away about where his other hand is. <laughs> the story, as I understand it, they went to see um, some sort of Broadway musical. I don't think it was on Broadway, but it was in like a similar theatre. Yeah, it was, it was, what's her name? It was... Um, She's a congresswoman. Yeah, what, was, what were they watching? Fred, not, not right said Fred, the fucking, what's the... Drop Dead Fred. Drop Dead Fred. Nah. No, it was Beetlejuice. No, it was Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Same era. <laughs> you know what I was talking about. <laughs> it was indeed, indeed Beetle, Beetlejuice. So she goes in and sits down with her boyfriend who immediately like, I don't even know how you would describe that action other than he grabbed a titty and was just flopping it around. Yeah, there was... Someone needs to tell dude, girls don't like that. (laughs) (laughs) It looked like that's what he was doing. Dude, I don't think for one moment that the thought of pleasuring her had crossed his mind. He was just like, tits, and I'm going to grab one. But she clearly enjoyed it because she proceeded to give him an over-the-pants hand job, the lowest ranking of all the hand jobs. Bless her though. Isn't that the response you want when grabbing it over the dress titty? Very true, because it is very difficult to be effective in a belt and jeans situation. Yeah, it's not easy access. No, Do you she would have easy to kind access? Of... Was easy access in your school? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> easy access on. Well, he was not running any easy access and um, started flopping around with the titty. But then, to add insult to injury, she was smoking, they were both smoking a vape in their seats. In front of a pregnant woman, how dare they? I like this couple. <laughs> this sounds like me. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I heard this uh, story and immediately thought of you. I was catching a sneaky vape at the UFC. Everything aligns except the titties and yeah, the over the pants hand job. <laughs> and I'm not as handsy. That's fair. <laughs> but yeah, that respect to it. You know what was weird? What? Who was filming that? It was CCTV. 
are you really meant to be CCTV? Well, I think the they theater? probably cause their own issues by like essentially dropping the "Don't you know who I am? I'm going to call the mayor on you." Yeah, kind nice. of shit. If you do that, then it escalates, and they have to then look at CCTV to understand who's in the right. And all they see is some titties getting groped, flopped around, if you will, and an over the pants hand job, and some ludicrous vaping. Some gratuitous vaping, she, if you she, will. She wasn't keeping it low key. It was she not wasn't low key. Into the I shirt. think she was blowing smoke rings. Guys, you need to just do this. <laughs> that is the most unstealthy maneuver ever. I was doing it at the UFC, and it's literally just coming out of my oh, yeah. ears. Then you people like look at you, Dracula. and you're like, "Yeah, what? I'm, sm- <laughs> I'm, I'm on spooky. fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a spooky man. <laughs> 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 I'm here spooking up the UFC." <laughs> So, yeah, then they fucking, they kicked off. So I think that that's why that occurred. But honestly, if you're a congresswoman, take a long, hard look at yourself. Probably don't give over the pants hand jobs in theatres. It humanises her. Hey, how old was she? Uh, I believe she's a year younger than me. So 37 Still ish. An active sexual m- imagination. Yeah. It would seem. Yeah. I'd go. I'd, I'd vote for her. <laughs> Uh, just have some decency. Do it in a theatre while you're watching Armageddon like all the rest of us <laughs> <Yeah>. did. <laughs> it had me scared when I saw it. I was like, man, I wonder if they've been filming me in every cinema I've been in. No shit. Let's hope not. A gross invasion of privacy. But sure. she really doubled down and I was actually looking through my photos because I know I took a screenshot of it. Um, you might have to just edit out the, the delay here while I look at it because she... She slammed her haters in a Twitter post, which the choice of language she used was short-sighted, shall we say. Clueless State of the Union? No, that wasn't it. Oh, God damn it. I'm not going to be able to find it. Um, she basically said... Something about uh, defending yet. Oh, God. How do I find this? I don't know. She basically said that uh, she aligns with God and that she does her best work on her knees. Respect. She's trolling everyone. <laughs> Has to have been. Eh? You that can't rules. be that dumb. <laughs> that rules. This woman sounds fucking awesome. She's like, I was talking about praying. <laughs> that is so, so good. Imagine if the Beetlejuice musical is just really hot from the get-go. Because that was pretty early in the game, right? Sexy Beetlejuice. <laughs> Good, sexy Beetlejuice it's Broadway show. Beetlejuicy. <laughs> <laughs> that is nuts, though. Imagine just being, realising you've been filmed doing that. And just being like, oh, no. It's very hard to come back from there. I don't know these days. The harsh reality of 480p CCTV footage. Getting yeah, your titties It was pretty flopped. grainy. I thought, I thought there was going to be a fucking a UFO in there or something. <laughs> <laughs> you see my dear baby UFO men? Yes. Alien men? Yeah, in Mexico. <laughs> they look pretty chill. Yeah. They're very small. Yes, yeah. <laughs> very small. They're like the size of the cat. Yeah. That's the kind of alien I could fuck with, really. Hard. One you could put in your pocket. Yeah, the ones that dance in Instagram filters on you and stuff. Yeah, pocket alien. Yeah, I like the, uh, I like that the Mexico Congress hearings were just like, oh yeah, we actually have some. Just <laughs> wheel them in. <laughs> they look pretty unrealistic though. Let's they be did. Honest. They did. I think it was proven later that they were in fact cake. Uh, so. That's what. It, that was the thing. And then they actually, some people did an MRI on them mm. this week and said they're legit. So who knows? Mm. But either way, it wasn't the smoking gun we've all been looking for. I think at this point. But, it, but isn't it? Like, I know. I know. I think everyone's just like. Got it's like, hey, guys, here's some actual <laughs> aliens. And we're like, ha, they're cake. I think they've just been testing. They've just been like psyching us into complete apathy for like mm-hmm. 15 years. Mm-hmm. And they're like, let's see if it worked. Here's aliens and everyone's like, cake. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing lands anymore. An nah. alien would have to come down, open my door, slap me directly in my face, give me an over-the-pants hand job of Beetlejuice <laughs> before I believe that it's real. You know what I'm saying? I think it's time we started using aliens as scapegoats for everything. 
<laughs> Why didn't you get to work today? Oh, fucking aliens. Again. It Try. does rule that people of our generation are now moving into like positions of power in politics and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, you are just like us. Yeah, yeah, so, true. Yeah, people are definitely getting fingered in cinemas. and <laughs> Not that I've done that in, since high school. True. Sadly. I don't get to the cinemas often. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, for fucking $34 or something, there's a lot cheaper options out there. <laughs> Yeah, my attention span. I went and watched when I went and watched Oppenheimer. I was just like, I think it's the first time. I, it's the first time I've been to the movies since COVID, and I was just like, oh my god, like checking my phone and stuff. I was like, I don't have the attention span for this anymore. When's this shit gonna end? I've been multitasking too hard. Mm. Oh man, I watched that. Um, Let me in. That new A twenty four horror movie. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah, it's Australian, and okay. it's really, really, really good. I think it's called Let Me In. Yeah, about people getting possessed and stuff. Sick. Yeah. I'll investigate. Investigate. <clears throat> um, how have you been, Scott? We haven't, um, we haven't done one of these since our Sydney escapades. This is true. Mm. Sydney was a vibe. Sydney was a vibe. It's good fun. We got it in. It's it good very, fun. Very adult. I got hammered drunk you and did. had to get a fucking flight home with a hangover. You did. I was very proud of you. You, yeah. um, you really just buckled down. It escalated very quickly. We went from this casual drink at a – how cool were hidden bars? Yeah. Yeah. There's a few of them over there, hey. It would appear so it since like we went to of two are. of them, yeah. <laughs> it's like down some sketchy alleyway and there's no – it was cool, man. I, I, thought it was, I thought it was a good time. But, yeah, deep into the margarita. I didn't realize we were going out afterwards. So we well, ended that, up, yeah, we didn't know that that yeah, was the plan. We ended up in King's Cross with the notorious Daniel Bradshaw wearing his sunglasses inside. I will, yeah, there was quite a lot of sunglasses inside in that place. There was, I knew immediately it was not a good place for me to be. <laughs> and Israel has San in there to collect the bag, obviously. He was just like, meh. Didn't because even he, fucking notice him, eh? I just had a bouncer push past me. I was like, oh, there must be a fight. No, he put his hand on me, eh? Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah. I thought, I didn't realize he had security with him because mm. he had a, a small entourage. But yeah, I just had a hand on the shoulder and I turned around and it was fucking Adesanya. <laughs> and I was like, meh. And he was also wearing sunglasses and they just moved Understandable. Past he yeah. probably couldn't see out of his eyes. <laughs> That's why he had his hand on you. He's trying to feel his way around. What do you think of the uh, the UFC? We was we we kind of had a brief chat about it afterwards. I'll go. We we didn't. I don't think I'd go again. Because and and the main thing was it was cool. It was entertaining, but you're still watching it on a screen. You can't help yourself but watch it on a screen. There's no commentary, so you have no real. I, th I feel like in fighting commentary actually adds quite a lot, which I hadn't realized. Um, and the crowd was just <laughs> I, like, that was a good fight. Mm. It was, it was pressure all the way through the Adesanya Strickland fight and Izzy could have knocked him out with one punch and you were waiting for that. So it was like, I thought I, I was like, damn, this is a good fight. I'm enjoying this. The crowd's just like, do something. Punch. It's like, Dude, there was first round knockouts littered through that card. Mm -hmm. It finished early. And then you're watching a, a super interesting fight between like a real high level striker and a retard machine. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I was like, people were not entertained. They were just shit. And that, what's with the... You. Oh, I don't understand it. It's Every, the Vuvuzela of Australia, right? It fully is. It was kind of a bit, a bit embarrassed by the, the whole thing, to be honest. Me too. Me too. Um, but, yeah, big crowds. Just like you said and we like we discussed, you know, the Chappelle show, uh, Segura, for example, whenever you go to those kind of big – those big events where you get a conglomeration of all different types and fucking yeah, pop species. Culture, full – in the zeitgeist, yes, popular. It brings out people that don't often leave their houses, and yeah. when they finally get out, they're like, "Fuck yeah, we're going big today because this is the only chance I got to get off the leash," you know. So I understand it from their perspective, but I struggle to 
I struggle to ignore it because it's yeah. so fucking annoying to me. Yeah, it definitely grinds on you. It wasn't like a... Grab his dick and twist it. It's like, dude, uh, it's a seven-year-old meme. Can we move past? Every single MMA event I've been to, some idiot. Yes. Show. And the problem is that... People laugh still. Yeah, and then they go, <laughs> you watch the person that yeah, said it. Yeah. Be like, oh, yeah. And then they're like, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> it's like, dude, shut the fuck up. I was starting a chant. We don't have any good chance Dude, in Australia. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie sucks. It sucks hard. so bad. It's so good to hear it fall flat on its face yes. all the time now. Yes. And you go, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. It's like, oh, oi. <laughs> and it's like, are you going to follow just it up? You're going to try and yeah, <laughs> yeah. just tapers out to nothing. Uh, and then that dude is just like, you know, heartbeat in the face. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't inspire them. <laughs> Dude, I fucking, yeah, Australians need to just chill. And then the fucking mad rush to get out. Look, I'd, I'll mirror your thoughts. I thought it was great to go and see. Being part of it was great. I think that the Sydney audience isn't as good as WA. I think that from what I heard about the Perth event, the atmosphere in there was just insane. But, mm. you know, you've also got Volk Makachev, which was an absolute fucking barnstormer. So. Yeah. You know, Izzy and Strickland, despite it being a good fight, it wasn't like a super interesting fight. Yeah. Um, so the, the it didn't really deliver on all aspects as I hoped it to. And when you compare it with the ticket price, uh, over $700, and you're still watching it on a TV, like you said, ugh. Now, we were close, but you're not close enough to see the detail. And it's yeah. the detail that's the most important bit. Everything happens so fast, you can't you can't physically see it um, from from that distance. Yeah, fully. I thought that's man. It would be so expensive to get drunk at that thing. That was the other crazy thing. Yeah, because you know people paying you know seven hundred dollars for a ticket and then to get two drinks is thirty bucks or something, right? Forty bucks. Yeah, and that was what we we, we got like water. We were drinking waters. Yeah, yeah, it was insane. Like it was insanely expensive. Mm. But you kind of expect – it's sad that we expect that. It's sad that as a bunch of morons we go to things and go, oh, okay, eight fifty nine bucks for a bottle of like 300 mil bottle of water. Yeah, why, is, why does it have to be like that? Because we allow it to. Yeah. Like we just literally are all just like, oh, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> it's like it doesn't make any fucking sense. It makes no sense. And it's like, oh, what about overheads? It's like uh, do you not think that that's $700 a ticket <laughs> – that we paid, like you guys should be covering your overheads on things like that. Mm, mm. It's just greed, man. Mm. And then there's this whole idea of like luxury where we're all like, oh yeah, we're, I mean, it is ridiculous. We spent so much money on those tickets and then you go to the whole thing and it's just like, realistically, it's, it doesn't create like, um, it doesn't, it didn't really create scarcity. They were just like, what's the absolute maximum price we can charge for this so we can just sell it out mm. and then you know you got Dana White on um, the post match thing being like it's the biggest indoor arena show in Australian history and everyone's like yeah wow it's like yeah it's because you charged so much money for it mm. like you guys have figured out that you can charge that much money yeah like I remember when we were going to get tickets for the Perth one I was like that can't be right it can't be that expensive and it's just like, yep. It's more than quadrupled. I'm pretty sure Delby got tickets for like 70 bucks or something when it came to Perth two shows ago. Yeah, he was sitting in the nosebleeds, but 70 buck tickets or something, you know? Like, yeah, well, that's what, what you'd fuck? expect for nosebleeds, right? Yeah, yeah. Across the board. Yeah. Capitalism, baby. It is what it is. Fucking Dana White needs a new Ferrari. Let's go. Dude, I went to, yeah, so I, we, we ended up after that going out. And hitting that party and stuff, which was quite funny. I think it was, it was quite funny in general. Watching the uh, uh, the little minions that kind of follow Bradshaw around in the club was pretty. It was. I always like being in clubs now because I'm just like a full fly on the wall. Like I'm not really participating in any capacity. And that club was just VIP booths with like. You know, real generic looking gangster bros. <laughs> Can we talk just, about the fucking VIP booth culture? Because it fucking, it confuses me. Yeah. 
What what are people thinking? I think a bottle in there was five hundred bucks. More? Oh, I have no idea. But it was. It would it might be. be more. It would. It would definitely be. You get a section. You get to look prestigious in some way, and you get to sit down and talk shit. Like realistically, there's nowhere else to sit in a club. But then you just end up with a bunch of flies around you, like. Mm-hmm. But the yeah, dudes with their like shirts fully unbuttoned, <laughs> passing out drinks as if they're the fucking messiah. It's like, bro, <laughs> go home. <laughs> bum bags. I was the like, only person in there without a fucking bum bag, I swear to God. Yeah, bum bag and sunglasses seem to be the thing. But yeah, it is what it is, man. It's just like, I mean, that culture, it was obvious that was, that was going to happen with like social media and TikTok and stuff. It's like everything has to be a um, caricature of itself almost. Yeah. And it's like every single place has a hierarchy and that's like, oh, I can do this because I have the money to do this or whatever. Mm. I remember they used to have it here because the club nights we ran were just sketchy rooms full of sweaty people which was cool but then there was some other nights that had things like that vip booths and stuff like that and they would have um there'd be dudes that i knew worked in call centers that would all pitch money together and get a booth and like ball out it was like is that what you're fucking working for like how many hours of calling my fucking phone from a private number (laughs) is going to justify this bottle there is a lot of that going on at a club here in Perth with the fucking sparklers coming out of Ciroc bottles and that I just don't understand. They come over with a big sign with your name on it with some bottles, with some sparklers and shit. It's yeah, like, I remember they used to do it in America all the time. Uh, why are we drawing attention to ourselves first? They make the peasant feel royal. Exactly. That's what it's all about. But we shouldn't understand it, dude. You're old. That shit. I mean, the, the sad – it would be sadder – if we were in, the, if you were in there doing it at this age, you'd be like, "Yeah, something that's gone." The people in there doing around. it are probably our age. Yeah, and they've always existed. Mm. They're called fucking losers. Could have made terrible life choices. <laughs> I feel bad being in there. Full stop. Like mm. I couldn't break that. I couldn't break that feeling of like, why am I? What am I doing in here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, "Oh, what?" Who are you? Like, what are you doing? It's like, no, nobody, bro. <laughs> I'm nothing. I just took a cash advance on my Visa card so I could buy this bottle. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Jesus, being uh, having to having to get a fucking flight the next day. Yeah, that, that was the first brutal. time in a while because I don't drink often. I was hungover and I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I got to the airport like two hours early because I was just like, I don't know what I can do. Full stop. And then I found a gate that, where there was no one. I just laid down on, <laughs> on the couches, was watching Peaky Blinders on my phone. And then I turned around and the, the gate was full. I realized I was like taking up seats. <laughs> so women and children standing around. I was like, okay. Good. Sorry, guys. I went and got myself a fried chicken sandwich, ate half of it, and then uh, just left it on the side of the hotel room. Uh, and that was pretty much as much as I achieved that day. Yeah. Oh, you stayed that extra night, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Which is good because it gave me a chance to kind of decompress. If I'd had to have gone to the airport in the state that I was in, I might have killed a man. Yeah. I just came home and slept. I sat next to, I bought Economy X on the way home so I could like get more legroom. And I sat next to a fucking warthog of a female who was wearing no socks with her shoes. And let me tell you, I could smell that the whole way. And it wasn't pleasant. I would go so far as to say it could strip paint. And I was sat next to it. I don't understand why in this day and age you would get on a plane and not have any socks on. It's ridiculous. People are gross though. People on mass are just gross. She works for a very... Well, she works for the Wildcats, actually. I'm not going to name her, but I saw her name. She was trying to work, working for the Wildcats, maybe in uh, marketing. And Maybe she'd wear some socks on the plane. She sucked. 
I'm sure Wildcats would give you a sponsorship for some fucking Nike socks. Next time, put them on. You don't reckon she had ankle socks on or something? No, 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 no. Because I thought that, and so I obviously, on a five and a half hour flight, was obsessed with it. So I did my diligence, and I can confirm there was no no show sock. <laughs> Man, on the plane on the way back, I was just like, I need nicotine. I was just like spending <laughs> bouts of time in the toilet. Ah. Anyone that tells you that um, vapes set off toilet. Alarms is lying to you. Oh, speaking of which, how fucked are planes right now? I had the misfortune of having to go to the toilet. And the toilet looked like a toilet at a nightclub. Like people just apparently piss on the floor. And when you lift the lid, the lid doesn't stay open. Yeah, it's very weird. So as a man, you have to hold the lid and the fucking, the, what's the, the seat, right? You technically have to hold that as well, but I'm not fucking wanting to touch that with my bare hands because I've seen the state of it. So I'm having to get toilet paper to hold the fucking lid up and I'm trying to piss and hold my own dick while the c- fucking plane's <laughs> moving like this. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, I have to do that and then also crouch oh, on an angle. I'm only 6'2", like, yeah, and not. I'm still like this. Imagine being your fucking height. Yeah, You're like nuts. crouching down. Like, what the fuck are we doing here, people? Oh, man, I hate it. I hate flying so much. The whole process is just insane. Flying sucks giant cock. I had to take – I got pulled up by fucking the scanners because I'd left my deodorant in my fucking toiletries bag. And did I do it on purpose and knowing full well it was in there? Yes. <laughs> Did I think I was going to get through? Yes. Did I get through? No. Was it fine? Yes. But did it waste my time and I have to unpack my bag? Yes. Can of deodorant brought down the Twin Towers, bro. (laughs) One lighter and a can of deodorant. deodorant. I swear to God. Imagine that hijack a flame with that. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone, (laughs) everyone relax. That could blow up if you don't let it go properly. That's the fucking tail, right? You blow your fingers off. Because aerosol cans are always... Suck aerosol back in and explode. Yeah, that's that's a that's with violence. Something that has happened. But honestly, can someone fucking one? Okay, here we go. Airlines standardize your procedure. If I have to take my shoes off at Sydney Airport, I should have to take them off at all airports. If I don't, then I shouldn't have to do it anywhere. Some places you got to take your laptop out. Some you don't. Some you need to take aerosols out, some you don't. And they shout at you at all of those things, man. It's like airports are the the slowest moving machines on earth, yet as soon as you hit the bit where you're meant to go through the scanners, you can be looking right at the woman that's going to tell you which one to go to and she will still be like, sir, go to number one. And then you go there and you're like, oh, do I need to take my laptop? And they won't even look at you. They will just shout into the air as if making an announcement. Mm -hmm. Or everything into one tray. Laptops can stay in. And it's like, oh, man, I'm just trying to not get fucking yelled at. Yes. It's like the only 10, 12 meter stretch in Australia where you're the fucking idiot every (laughs) second. Every single time. At Brisbane, they made me take my belt off. I was like, is this prison? Am I wearing 34 pants and I'm a 32? Yes. Were they falling down while I was walking? Yes. What the fuck are we doing here, people? Do you ever stand in the machine? Yeah. Where they can see your dick and stuff? Like you're a burglar. Yeah. <laughs> like, now stand there and look guilty. <laughs> As they put me through that, I was like, oh, I haven't had a chance to fluff. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just work yeah. up a mongrel. I don't want you to see my here. hungover tiny penis. <laughs> <laughs> My YouTube algorithm is just horrible at the moment because I watched a September 11 thing on YouTube and YouTube was just like, oh, you like that, do you? <laughs> Have I got someone yeah, for you? YouTube was pretty much built on September 11 videos and um, even though they took down all the good ones that tell you like the Pentagon was a false flag attack. <laughs> but the, um, Jesus Christ, man, my YouTube is just September 11 stuff now and it's crazy. I can't stop watching <laughs> It's like Ray Romano says where he was on September 11. He's like, yeah, I was in a hotel. This isn't relevant. I don't know that Ray, Ray Romano has the answers I need right now. I was filming Everybody Loves Raymond. The craziest one was watching one of the live news things and it's obviously they cut to it and one of the buildings is on fire. 
and they're going, oh, we're just trying to figure out what, what happened. And like, we're getting some images and it looks like a plane or we heard that a plane, they, they're just like trying to fill the air, you know, they're like, hopefully people are okay. They're able to get out. Like, it looks like some sort of obvious accident, da, da, da. And then there's just this fucking explosion and it's so nuts. It's like Hollywood movie. You forget until you like see it from a different angle and you're like, they're just like, oh, that wasn't linked to this one. That was like a bomb. Like that was a full explosion. Mm. And then some woman calls up and they let her live on the air. And she's like, yeah, um, look at the top of the screen. And you see the plane's real small. Mm. But you see it come in and it's terrifying, dude. Like I was watching it and I was actually like, fuck. And then mm. when they realize, you hear their voices change completely. And they're just like, that's definitely not an accident. It's fucking crazy. A wild time. You, you kind of think in America they have like F-16s just sitting there ready to go armed in case something, I don't know why, we just kind of assume that. And they were interviewing like F-16 pilots and they were like, yeah, that's not how it is. They're like, we got the call, we got told to stand on alert or whatever. But none of their planes were hot, so none of them had weapons. And the second plane hit the tower and they were like, you guys are just going to have to go up. So they went up unarmed. And then they found that the one that crashed over Pittsburgh and uh, this woman's like, yeah, we were following it and we were going to have to ram it. The two pilots, they're like, we were just going to have to die. Holy shit. And then they were watching it and it, <laughs> and it crashed because oh, the wow. fucking people on board were just like, nah. Yeah, fuck this. Yeah. That's Took wild. it down into a field. That it's so crazy, dude. It's such a crazy thing that we grew up with that. And all the and different like, stories are very interesting that come out of it. Like, so you can hear all the different perspectives, you know, like those sliding doors things. I was on the plane, funny, like, bring it up. I was listening to that guy, Sean Ryan, one of his uh, interviews with a guy who was, like, special forces or whatever. And what they were doing, they were in New York, I think, at the time. And they were um, doing what they call red cell, which is where they basically pretend to be Russian – infiltrators and they try and do a series of activities that would replicate stealing nuclear launch codes. So you have to hunt down certain generals, follow them to where they need to be, simulate shooting them. Obviously none of this happens, but this guy, long story short, was in the bushes at a fucking army base surveilling this general when the Twin Towers started to blow up and all of a sudden all these Marines come running out fully armed and he's there hiding in some bushes like a fucking spy. He's like, I'm going to get shot here yeah, if I he don't get in out. Full, I listened to the full same thing, full CV yeah. stuff. <laughs> that was crazy, yeah. But yeah, that, all, that, all that 9-11 stuff's crazy. Constantly we're, we're always talking about like, we're the mo it's the most divided that it's ever been right now and like... We're on the brink of this and we're on the brink of that. It's like, can you imagine if 9-11 happened tomorrow? <laughs> People would just freak the fuck out. Like it changes culture completely because it's suddenly that's a thing that can happen. Apparently America was like so united, it was super divided on September 10 and then September 12, everyone was just like, what are we going to do? Yeah, it's pretty nuts. I mean, look at Japan. Japan got bombed and prior to that for like 300 years, they were absolute psychopaths. <laughs> kamikaze pilots and they were constantly a problem same as germany they were constantly trying to fuck with everyone else around them and then they had two nukes dropped on them and the psychology of that entire country is like i've never seen a more culturally americanized country since right like it's all people wearing mickey mouse shirts and stuff mm. it's mm. like what can you imagine if you were alive and survive the bombings and stuff and live through that period. Dude's walking and then down the road you're like Undertaker 90. shirt on. Yeah, <laughs> like, now you're 90 you, yeah. and you're just like, Mickey Mouse killed my fucking friend. <laughs> but yeah, it's weird because that was defeat, right? Whereas in America, it was, it was an attack. Like if they would have nuked Chicago or something, maybe everyone would be wearing fucking... Turbans. Turbans and stuff now. <laughs> was it turbans they were wearing in Afghanistan? I'm not trying to be insensitive. What do they wear? The, yeah. the head, the, the head gear? Yeah. Uh, I Maybe don't some know. Some form of a turban, perhaps? I don't know what you'd call it. I don't think it's a turban. I think that's like an Indian term. Mm -hmm. um, there would be a name for it in Arabic. I know, like, the, they, the dress 
like not dress, like what it, like they wear. They call it a thobe or a like dish dash is like the um, colloquial term for it. I I think I don't actually remember what they call the um, the headgear. It's surprising that we never took onto that as a society, considering our climate. Dude, it's sick. I was actually thinking about like adopting the thobe myself because mm. it would be vibing, especially in the summer. Free ball it, just have a constant breeze. You've been slowly trying out new fashion choices. Exactly. You were an had animal a print. T- had a lapid leopard t-shirt on. Yeah. I don't see. I think you could probably. This is the summer of the thobe. <laughs> the thobe. The thobe. Thobe life. It's got to get some nice leather sandals. Maybe like a nice black shawl with some gold fucking detailing. That'd be really nice. Keep it classy, you know. I respect it. Mm. Plus, I mean, you came from that life. That's right. That's your heritage. Exactly. Oh, I've been having a solid laugh this week. I'll show you the photo to give you some context on this. It will not be shown to the public. <laughs> you kind of are accepting that in the modern age, girls especially using absolutely hectic filters on selfies. And we've kind of just adapted to this idea where we're like, oh, yeah, that's what they look like. And then I think I'd said to you a while ago, like, I know a girl and she posted a photo and it's and it tells you what f- filter they use. And it's like, try this. Yeah. And you try it and it's insane. Like you put it on yourself, it's fucking insane. When girls want to get photos with their boyfriends, they obviously need to maintain the Instagram the illusion. illusion. <laughs> So the men have to suffer for it. This girl looks like she does in every photo and the dude looks <laughs> fucking insane. It was like Mr. Potato Head. Like he has no features. <laughs> it's so hectic. Bro. Because the other thing it does as well is if like, if you're in the unfortunate situation of starting to go a bit thin on top. I was about to say, it didn't do anything for his hairline. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> oh, oh my God. This poor dude looks like Mr. Potato Head. Do you know what's wild though? Is that he looks completely ridiculous. She. She's great. Kind of looks normal. Yeah, because that's what I'm so used to seeing. And when you her. said, we're just, we just like assume now like that's what they look like. I was like, no, oh, not really. I understand. Yeah. And I agree. <laughs> it's confusing to the brain because my brain was like, she put a ridiculous filter on him and then I was like, wait. <gasps> yeah. <gasps> <gasps> my reality came crashing down around me. Dude, you can do ones that are just so insane. They change the your complete face. structure of your mm. face. They put different eyeballs in you. Like, it's nuts. I don't trust anything anymore. Mm. Rightfully so, to be honest. Especially if you take the photo, put the filter on, screenshot the photo, edit out where you filtered it, and then repost it. Yeah, that's what she probably should have done. Mm. She probably should have been like... She was lazy with it. Yeah. Maybe in, in the future, Instagram's just going to have ones where you can select the person that gets filtered. I would suggest that she takes that advice because your boy looks like a fucking smudge. <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta <laughs> feel for him as well because Bro. you never want to partake in those photos. Like you're like, all my relationships. I wish I had more photos. I've never been a photo person. Like mm. I've never been like, bring it in because mm. I'm just fucking insecure. I'm just like, oh, sick. I have a fucking photo where I look ridiculous. <laughs> and it's just like you look back on them in the future and you're like, oh no, I look fine. But at the time, you're just like. I don't want to be photographed, not into this. That dude is just like, had to get in that photo and then she's probably taken nine of them. She wouldn't have consulted him on the posting. (laughs) And then she's posted it. He's felt that if I don't like this or repost it, there's going to be problems. He looks like a (laughs) half-shorn kiwi fruit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you need to chill. And then he needs to share that to the world <laughs> as if he's proud of it. Yeah. It's just the way that the world is, man. It's the funniest thing. I was I was watching the takedown of Russell Brand, which is rightfully pro- so the pig. <laughs> probably the best one so far. Where Oi, it's just like world. We knew this <laughs> for ages. You guys used to celebrate it. Yes. Like his entire like personality is built you, around. You guys the fact. were bringing him on TV, being like a known Lothario. <laughs> they this made naughty movies boy. <laughs> joking about it, like get him to the Greek. And now you're fucking enraged. There needs to be some form of redemption story, right? It's like, yeah, I used to be a heroin addict. And now, like, I'm out here 
talking, you know, his truth or whatever it is. And he has suddenly like millions and millions of followers and there's an election coming up and they're like, we're going to have to fucking uh, get rid of this guy. And it's hilarious because they're sending out official documentation, official letters of request to YouTube, Spotify, uh, YouTube, um, TikTok and Rumble being like, we need you to demonetize this person and take them down because they're a bad person. And Rumble and TikTok were just like, hey, here's the documents they just sent us. This is ridiculous. And YouTube were a bunch of cucks. cucks. Absolute cucks, man. We can't, I can't, we can't get a, anything monetized on there. Full no. stop. I sat on the last episode and took every swear word out. It took me hours. The dude swore a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And it's still, I still couldn't get it. It's, it's just still, like, okay, this is what it is. What's crazy is the fact that he's had his rags to riches. He went from heroin addict to Katy Perry. Mm-hmm. You can't get better than that. And, and when the marriage with Katy down. Perry didn't work out, they agreed to get a divorce and he didn't take any of her money. And that was a big story. It was mm-hmm. like he could have taken half of Katy Perry's money because she didn't have a prenup. But they were on good terms and they were just like, hey, so I love you. Chill. It's all worked out. Yeah. Like, we'll do our own thing. It's insane. But oh, yeah, the fucking craziest part about it was rape is a fucking hideous thing. It's the second worst thing to murder, right? Anyone that is a rapist deserves fucking everything they get. So when a sexual abuse or rape allegation comes out about him from 20 years ago, you're like, okay, but this isn't anything that we've not seen before, investigate it, find out the the details, go through the system and all that, right? But when the story comes out on like NPR and New York Times and stuff and the headline is Russell Brand accused of rape and emotional abuse, immediately I'm like, this doesn't sound like you don't need a package deal for that. Because yeah. if I was going to turn around, if, some, if, if you murdered someone, they're not going to put a headline up going, Joshua Gray accused of murder and saying bad things on a podcast. Russell so Brand accused of rape and leaving the milk yeah. out. <laughs> it's like they're obviously piling some shit on. Emotional abuse has to be the most generic open for impression. Like I could, I have been completely in love with a few people and had long meaningful awesome relationships with them every single one of them has emotionally abused me (laughs) (laughs) and i have done the same it's called having an argument not resolute not resolving anything and then many many years later having an argument and coming back and referring to that yes. thing and being like, I never forgave you. And they're like, you said you did. And then you hold shit over each other until you reach a point where you're just like, what are we fucking doing here? Mm-hmm. And that is the way that people filter out who's going to remain in their lives for long periods of time. Or you just go, look, we've, we've tried our absolute best. This didn't work out. But that period from where you're like un, where you realize you're not happy and then you're trying and you're trying to get stuff together and you it never really gets back to where it should have been but you're both kind of still there that period of time is called emotional abuse <laughs> like consistently and i don't want to fucking point fingers at like particular genders but i will say that of which there are <laughs> multitudes <laughs> Shall we confirm? The only there's only two that I can that I've had experience <gasps> with personally. Not, not to say I'm still yet to catch them all. Scott but. Miller, not a rapist, <laughs> but gaslighter and gender denier. You've heard it here. Oh, first, gaslighting folks. is gaslighting is the other one. <laughs> oh. Gaslight gaslighting is amazing. Gaslighting is a term where you you'll be arguing with someone and they will come up with something completely <laughs> ridiculous, and you're like, why would you say that? That's crazy. That's gaslighting. It's like, no, this is me kind of pointing out a flaw in your argument. (laughs) And I think the problem with these sorts of things is I'm sure there is like malicious gaslighters out there and there's Mm -hmm. malicious. I'm sure that like emotional abuse in its worst could probably be completely fucked up. A run of the mill emotional abuse is pretty common in general relationships. The, the, the lackadaisical nature in which that word is just thrown out for no apparent reason. 
diminishes its effectiveness, its efficacy, if you're just using it for the sake of it. Like if I didn't put milk in the fridge, it's not gaslighting. You need to be very specific around how you use it. (laughs) (laughs) Gaslighting would be like not putting the milk in the fridge and then they're like the milk's out and you're like, like, it was you. You left it out. (laughs) I watched you do it. (laughs) You're so stupid. Oh my God. That would be the fucking worst. Have you ever found yourself in a position where there is something extremely heavy to pick up and you do not have the physical attributes to be able to manage it? I have. I know Scott has. And if you find yourself in a similar predicament, you should reach out to Jackson Moore at Perth Fork Trucks. These boys have been servicing the Perth fork trucking industry for over a decade? Maybe more. I don't know. It's been a long time. We don't have that information. They are experts, though. You can guarantee that. The guys are currently running a promo up until December where you can enter for free to win yourself a forklift. Now... I'm personally thinking about entering just so I can drive it down Murray Street and move any idiot that doesn't know how to merge properly. If you're interested in winning your own very own fork truck, go to perthforktrucks.com.au. The link is going to be down in the description below or reach out to Jackson Moore. Oh, speaking of which, Boys to Men are coming to um, whatever they call that fucking weird festival with all the old rappers hell yeah juicy or whatever the fuck it's called hell yeah it's like kelly Rowland, boys to men seems like a vibe i might have that to does go rule. i might have to go dude they were my favorite band when i was like in bahrain so i would have been i don't think you could call them a band can you it's like group but yeah favorite group but i was my, my first like broken heart was boys to men did i tell you that is no I think I would have been like year three. Early days. Early days and um, had a bit of a crush. Mm -hmm. It came to Christmas or whatever it was. I think we might have been dating, Mm. you know. She might have been my first girlfriend. Yeah, Yeah, it was getting pretty pretty real. And um, Any over-the-pants hand jobs (laughs) in movie (laughs) theaters? Sadly, I was unaware of what the penis did at that point. Um, (laughs) I bought her a... A single <laughs> oh yes of boys to men Sick. i'll make love to you oh. <laughs> i'll make love to you <laughs> like you want me to <laughs> i'd love it <laughs> and i um and i gave it to her mm-hmm. and then her parents contacted my parents <laughs> <laughs> the forbidden romance dude it's the vibe of the thing it's not the words <laughs> i didn't even know what they were talking about oh, i know i was like this just sounds Never nice will stop till you <laughs> tell me to imagine that they would have been like 25 year old parents or something at the time as well just being like this kid's trying to fuck our daughter yeah. <laughs> and he won't stop until she tells him to that's rape <laughs> he's a known gaslighter as well well scott is he emotionally <laughs> abusing my daughter <laughs> such a young age Dude, boys men fuck fire. I actually went to the my year 12. No, I didn't. Someone else went to my year 12 ball with her. And then I danced with her in my year 12 <gasps> ball. Scandal. And I had a boner. <laughs> <laughs> you tuck it up in your pants? Nah. No, it no wonder. It was year two. Like you were year 12. Just let it fly. You were dancing. Everyone was like yeah. close dancing. True. I guarantee like 90% of the people dancing there were like. Barred up. Yeah. And they were getting pressed into. Mm-hmm. Think about back to like how just barred up you were for like five years from being like 14 to 19. Perpetual. It's insane that dudes just don't go completely crazy. <laughs> I think, you know, this is a, all of this is. Hearsay um, and conjecture? Yeah. I'm probably going to get in trouble <laughs> for my honesty in this. I was, so I had a theory that's been brewing. I'm not, it's not completely formed yet. The basis of the thought was that our parents' generation and the generation before that made all this money on housing exploited everything to a point that we just grew up thinking that we were going to own like a house and an investment property and yeah. have like a boat. Cause that's normal. Cause that was mm. the, that just seemed to be the way that the world worked. And whenever you asked anyone how that happens, they're just like, you just buy a fucking house and then it, it doubles in value in three years. It's not that hard. And then you leverage against that. It's not that and hard. And you're like, I'm studying year 11 <laughs> economics. I'm pretty confident that this is not, a viable trend that is going to continue. And they were all like, property, it's your best investment strategy. And then the ass falls out of all of that the week you buy your fucking apartment and you go and ask everyone that's over the age of 50 
and they go, we got no fucking idea. And you were just like, you led me astray, barefoot investor, rich dad, poor dad, <laughs> you motherfuckers. Anyway, I was like, yeah, that's pretty funny. And then we ended up hitting an age where we were like, oh, shit, this money is not as easy come, easy go as, it, as, we, as we were expecting it to be. And then we have to deal with the next generation of people just calling us like, bigots racists and assholes like <laughs> you're just stuck between a rock and a hard place where you're just like oh we're not fucking anything off of you we promise um we're just being martyred but yeah then i was like okay that's somewhat funny enough to talk about on the podcast but then i was like we were the first generation to get internet porn we were like the first generation of just like mass over sexualization Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. Yeah, and then it was just like dial-up internet straight into scene. Genie in my bottle. Didn't have to go. <laughs> didn't didn't have to go buy magazines. Porn was available, and it just got more and more and more. What it did was it allowed like a whole generation of people to be to be able to look at porn at any fucking time, and that made everyone mental. And I was like, I'm surprised it didn't make people more mental. And I was like, oh, shit, we had emo music. (laughs) (laughs) And that was a bunch of dudes, 16 to 24, just being like, fuck, fuck, (laughs) you fucking bitch, fuck. (laughs) And it was like, that just happened for a minute and then it stopped and it hasn't really continued since. Yeah, true. Hawthorne Heights existed for a while there. (laughs) And it was like, what's this guy mad about? It was like, I think it was just this like insane amount of over-sexualized kids that had just seen way too much porn just being like, this isn't happening for me. Like, and then slowly over time, I think girls started watching porn and then we, I don't know, we all got the fruits of like sexual liberation through that to some degree. I think there's difference between sexual liberation in the 70s sense mm-hmm. versus sexual liberation in the 2000s sense. Because sexual liberation in the 2000s just meant that girls were more free about who they had sex with, but they only had sex with the top 5% of good-looking dudes. Whereas in the 70s, it was about free love and everyone was fucking everyone. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think in the 60s and you 70s, think so? I, think they were sti- I think the drugs played a pretty big part. People were like, <laughs> take psychedelics and sleep with a fat dude. I don't think that they woke up being, being like, oh, yeah, like heavenly spring flower. They were still like, oh, my God, I slept with a mutant <laughs> in this field while Led Zeppelin were playing. Pretty good story. Though. I think, yeah, I think sex became more performative in the 2000s. I think 100%. maybe before people were just kind of like humping missionary <laughs> and then Pornhub dropped and then everyone was suddenly like, hey, there is a multitude of things that can be done here and everyone got a little less like mm. prissy about it. But it probably hasn't done much for our marriages and relationships. Interesting. What else you got for me? You got any final thoughts? I did get my new car, which I really enjoy. Have you done anything crazy with it yet? I did a burnout. (laughs) You're not going to learn. The burnouts cause problems in cars? Nah. It's got a burnout mode. What's burnout mode called? Oh. (laughs) Just pressing the brake and the accelerator at the same time. The secret code to unlock a burnout. (laughs) Um, I was driving back from training the other night and I was on a bit of a fucking, you know, one of those nights where like if you leave the gym and you've got that range of endorphins. Just grinded on men for a few hours. Exactly, yeah. I was feeling horny as shit. Horny as fuck. (laughs) I got to do a burnout. (laughs) 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 I got to let go of something, put on some Hawthorne Heights and just fucking do some burnouts. (laughs) Cut my wrist and black my eyes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I uh, fucking spun one up, eh? But um, what I didn't realise is... Did if you, you go to a car park to do it or did you Nah, just- nah. Hypothetically, <laughs> it might have been on the side of the road in Osborne Park, but <laughs> it didn't actually happen. This is mm. just, this is just um, hypothetical. But um, I was driving back hypothetically and um, what, what I didn't realise is in that car, when it's all set up correctly in the proper modes and shit, if you hammer on the brake and then hammer on the accelerator, it'll go launch control mode. So, launch <laughs> control? What? Yeah. Launch control? Launch control. Fuck, it's, for when you wanna, this. it's for when you, wanna dra- when you want to drag race the car. So it sets the car up to be the most 
explosive, the quickest off the line. But it'll... This is not what they've made it for, right? Yeah, yeah. Literally, it has a mode called launch control. A little checkered flag comes up on the dash and it's like launch control, build So the boost. dudes that are making Correct. BMWs are just like, let's... All, all cars pretty much, like performance cars these days, have a launch control mode generally. So this is very easy to access, but what it's not good for is doing burnouts because it, it gives you a certain level of traction to make sure the car gets off the line quickly because mm. if you just gassed it, it would just do a giant skid. So I realized that it was doing that, backed off, and then restarted. But all you got to do is just basically just touch the brake and then just jump on the accelerator and it just lights the tires up. You can click a gear and just steer. <laughs> so much fun. Is it rear-wheel drive? Yes. Yeah, mine's rear-wheel drive. You can get G82s that are X-Drive, so the four-wheel drive. Super cool. You can press just a button on the dash and it turns off four-wheel drive, so you've got two-wheel drive. You technically have the best of both worlds, but it's not It's not quite as cool as a genuine rear-wheel drive car. In my opinion. What's the burnout icon? If the launch control icon is there's a no, little There's no flag, icon. It's just... Uh, what would it be? <laughs> if you? It would just be the car doing like these ones. <laughs> oh, like the wet, the, yeah, the yeah, driving yeah, the wet one. Yeah. I thought it'd be like a mullet, like a side profile mullet. But do you know what it does have? A drift analyzer. So I can put it into a mode that... Yeah, but they don't mean drift no, the car. They no, mean no, no, if no. you're going, like no. if you lose control. No, no. A proper drift analyzer. It's for the track. So if I hold down track mode it gets this thing up where it shows you five stars animated and depending on how sideways you get it and for how long, you, do, 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 you get all yeah. the stars. As you click it, it just turns on like Tokyo, exactly. like what was, what was it, Teriyaki Boys? Yeah. If you yeah. really want to go. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yes, Drift Analyzer. So I, I made the very good question to my um, sales associate. I was like, can you wipe the memory of the drift analyzer? Because if I sell this car, I don't want it to be like five star drift, 170 meters. You know? Yeah, they're probably going to get you on that, right? Like they'll probably be getting people now where Mate, it records if you everything. Get, yeah, if if you you know you're driving there, you know how fast you were going. You were like, yeah, I was doing 30. <clears throat> yeah, because you know they didn't get a reading. They'll just like yeah. lean in and be like, mm, no, playback. It's like don't touch me. You don't touch fucking my car. fully could, eh? And interestingly, it's got this feature. That I've never like seen before in another car. Like, let's say you're driving down a really uh, tight alleyway or something, and you've gotten down. And you're like, "Oh fuck, I can't park here. I can't get out." And you're like, "Oh, it's so tight. Like, I can reverse, but I'm worried like of hitting something." You can literally just take your hand off the wheel, hand off the throttle, press reverse assistant, and the car will back itself out because it remembers the last 500 feet of your journey. And it will just back itself out using the exact route that you took to get in. Oh, so you're in the future. Do you trust it? Yeah. You I do it? Because well, be, I'd be shitty and be like, whoa. Yeah, fuck. I know. I used it to self-park the other day in a, in a car park that was quite tight. I was like, it picked up a car park. And I was like, oh, okay, let's fucking do this. And I just sat there with my hands up like this. And it's like, and it just puts you straight in. And it, the use of the sensors, it works out the exact halfway point between the car next to you and the car next to you. So it doesn't use the lines, it uses the cars. The cars, yeah. So even if one car is kind of parked over, it's not going to put you up where you can't get the door open. And then when it parks, it shows on the animation how far you can open your doors without hitting something. <laughs> Dude, I did that. At, I, I went to the dentist yesterday and then I had... Um, I was at Risley Street. You see our dear Greg? Nah, but... You go to the yeah, hygienist yeah. now? Yeah. And uh, they rule. I love those guys. Risley Street Dental, for anyone who worries about their teeth, go yeah, see shout out for the most that's... handsome dentist in Perth, Greg Truly. Yap. And those guys rule. They have Netflix on a TV. So they nice. They give you the remote. Yep. They have Eunice, who's been looking after this, mm -hmm. this mouth. Chompers. Yep. Um, so I got like, I had a little cracked guy at the back because I grind. Mm -hmm. So I'm on my grind, bro. I yeah. stay grinding. On that 50-50, boy. All the time. <laughs> Never stops. <laughs> even when I'm sleeping. And uh, yeah, I, was, I got quite attached to my little sharp mm. tooth at the back where I was like playing with it while I was thinking. Like, hmm. It's my guy. And now it's gone. Mm. And it just, doesn't, it just doesn't feel right. But yeah, I went to the shops that are there. What are, it's Burgoon. Burgoon. Yeah. And um, Garden City. Yes. Yeah, Jammed, obviously, because mm. it's a Saturday. And there was someone parked on like a a pretty strong, it was a good 60-degree angle. <laughs> <laughs> it 
So I've pulled in and I'm on the furthest park to the right. So I've pulled in and I've gone, oh, well, I'll go with them. So I kind of had half gone bet- between the lines and then aligned with them because if I would have gone straight, I'm like, this guy is definitely going to grind me on the way out. And I've just jumped in and then when I come back – there's like just my car park, like an absolute dickhead. I'm like, you guys don't understand. <laughs> it was noteworthy. <laughs> it was fully noteworthy, and no one, no one had the balls. Yeah, good. Fuck them. Um. Yeah. Well, look. Well, let's wrap up. Uh, I think we need to do a quick shout out. A couple of guys have bought some merch recently. We got our dear friend Tyson Foster, Ian Strange, previous guest. And Kate Kapoor who have all forked out for merch. So thanks, guys. Appreciate you. It looks like the song I made has finally started to pay off. And very interestingly, I think we said that this was all sold out maybe seven to eight weeks ago and yeah. still there must be some inventory some floating inventory. around. I've still got to put up the new stuff. We do have new stuff coming. Allegedly. According to our scourge. I made the song and then I was like, this merch needs to stay. That song was sick though, honestly. <laughs> So props to you for that. Thanks. And look, Didn't get an ARIA nomination, sadly. Hey, there's still time. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening as per usual. Hope you've enjoyed our fucking shit talk. I'm a few beers in, so if there's anything offensive, just call my manager. And on that uh, note, We'll do a final shout-out to the boys at Bicep. They were sponsoring the pod mm-hmm. for the last few months. I had a chat with them yesterday and – they're backing off a little bit because I think like all industries, shit's getting a bit tight. So Time's tough. Yeah. Go hit the boys up if you need any um, – Labor hire. Labor hire at all and they are good blokes. So thanks for the run, boys. Dylan and Aldo, appreciate you guys. And they also started a podcast, so respect to that. They've had one for a while. Yeah. God I can't bless. what it's called. No, neither can I. But write it in the comments or something. Um and yeah, if anyone wants to get on board for sponsorship, there is a space available. Yeah, uh, we will do anything, including gaslighting you uh, if that's what you need mm. to get off. So, on there that note, no, there will be no emotional abuse on this podcast unless it's consensual. <laughs> Peace. Bye bye. Lovegoodpodcast.com. Lovegoodpodcast.com. Lovegoodpodcast.com.